All right, what we have here is a 587. I guess it's actually a 580.7, but they call it a 587 in the 1995 Sea-Doo SP. Engine ran great and then suddenly started bogging down dying and started backfiring out the exhaust and intake. I thought it was bad fuel at the time, so spent some time getting the fuel out, putting new fuel in, that didn't work. Went through the carburetor, found a little bit of dirt in there, thought that was going to fix it, didn't. Then we ended up taking the rotary valve out of it, thinking that maybe stripped that brass gear, which is common on the drive shaft, but that looks tight. And nothing there, and continuing to troubleshoot and looking at the service manual and some YouTube videos, apparently these engines, this series, including the the larger engines, all suffer from possible keyway failure. And sure enough, when we got this one apart, I don't know how well you can see that, but the key in the shaft is pretty much completely wiped out. We didn't even we found just very little pieces, just a couple, like two little pieces of the key. I don't even know where the rest went. Shaft is wiped out and irreparable at that point and then the flywheel kind of same thing where the key on the towards the rear is in pretty good shape but the front is is pretty much gone and unrepairable with the tools and equipment i have and looking on eBay, I saw one flywheel that was for sale for 30 bucks, which isn't a bad price. But looking at the keyway from the pictures, it's a very similar situation and likely why that engine quit as well, which is very unfortunate to lose a whole jet ski over something like that. With that said, what are our options here? What we're going to attempt to do today is to the best of our ability keep this alignment of the shaft, the key in the tw what I concluded is a 12 o'clock position. We'll keep it as vertical as we can. I went ahead and marked with a sharpie where the center of the keyway is. We're going to slide that on there. Go ahead and impact this nut on there to the best of our ability, which my impact wrench doesn't actually produce that much torque, so I'm not too worried about doing too much. And then what we're going to do is we're going to weld the nut to the flywheel and then also weld the nut to the shaft. And I know a lot of you guys are thinking you can't do that because, or you shouldn't do that, and I agree that you'll end up potentially disturbing or distorting that shaft, which is always a, it's a known fact when you touch an arc onto a high tolerance precise shaft like that you're going to distort it and that's something we're willing to work with because we already know this shaft is junk so that's going to we can't make it any worse the flywheel is essentially unrepairable again with the tools I have so we really can't make anything worse other than spend some time and maybe be unsuccessful but if we are successful we can get some more life out of this the other thing we are going to prevent is easily taking this apart in the future again, which means the engine will have to be pulled out and this, this stuff ground, ground apart to get it apart if we have any work to do on the magneto. And that's just something we're willing to deal with now. I don't know if this shaft, I think this shaft is poss it possibly can come out without pulling the engine. It looks like it's, it's a separate shaft from some other videos I was looking, but we're not even going to take it off because we don't have another one. It doesn't do us any good. So we'll go ahead and attempt a weld repair. We'll put the flywheel in the best location that we can find, given those reference points we have to work with. We'll weld it all up, and we'll do that in stages. We'll weld, just make little stitch welds and let them cool down so that we don't overheat the shaft and, and lose the seal on the, on the mag piston. So we'll have to take our time doing this. And hopefully in the end we'll have something that runs again. We'll have to retime the rotary valve and then we'll see where we're at. And hopefully we didn't do any damage while we were trying to start this while the timing was off because we were getting some pretty hard backfiring into the crankcase and through the intake. And I'm worried that we may have possibly damaged the seals in the crankcase as well. 
So let's go ahead and do that and we'll check back in when we're done and see if we're any closer to getting this thing to run again. All right, we got the flywheel back on in the best lined up position I thought I could get it. And we welded it in two spots and on each side of the nut, two spots from the nut to the shaft and two spots opposite from the nut to the flywheel. There's really no reason not to weld it continuous around and alternating the sides as you go and let it cool down in between, but I'm thinking the two welds should be good enough, although I'll be upset if those break and I won't be able to take it apart again because the nut is now welded on there because it's most likely it'll break between the flywheel and the nut and not the nut and the shaft, although it's hard to tell. Just because I, it looks like I got a better weld on the shaft than I did. There's a little bit of a gap between the nut and the flywheel that you have to fill in. And one thing you want to keep in mind is that you don't want to put too much heat in here. You always want that to cool down in between your passes, small passes, because the flywheel has mag magnets in it, and if you overheat it, that they can lose their magnetism and then you'll lose your spark and then you don't want to burn up any anything either any wiring that's associated with it but i believe we should be pretty close to at least testing this out we'll look for spark first and then we'll see if it if it runs up the other thing is uh there was something else i meant to tell Hell yeah, on here too, but now I can't remember what it was. Oh, the as you add mass to either side of the shaft, as you can imagine, it turns pretty fast. So there's some tripodal force comes into play at some point, and you always want to make sure you have an equal amount of weld to the best of your ability. It's never going to be perfect, especially the way I weld, but make it as even as you can on both sides just to counterbalance any centripetal force from that weight of the rod that you're putting in there because at those speeds it does start to make a difference and you'll get some vibration and I suspect our vibration is going to go up in this engine a little bit but hopefully it'll still be tolerable and the next step is we'll clean stuff up put the cover on check for spark and see if we got a running ski all right, we're ready to check spark on this machine. I'm also working, you guys may have noticed in the background, I'm looking at this other machine too. It's a 1990 Kawasaki TS650 or JF650, I think they refer to it as. It wasn't getting any spark. I thought it was a CDI box, bought a new one, and it's not that. So we're tracing it back into the magneto. I'm in the process of taking that apart now, and. As you can imagine, a lot of these screws, they're really set tight. Of course, on this one, we didn't run into the problem with the sheared key, which is a big lifesaver, and it was extremely tough to get off, which is typical, versus how it was on the sea -Doo. But one thing I wanted to show you guys real quick is this tool, and I'm not even sure what the name of it is, but this is a tech, Tekton version of this tool. And what it allows you to do is to basically simulate an impact gun on Phillips and flathead screws and you can imagine for Phillips especially how useful that could be this screw I just I started to you can I don't know if you can see it or not but it started to strip and I thought it was gonna be slated for being drilled out as a next step I was able to break this one free but I, I started that one and this wasn't pushing that hard into it, started to strip it, and I thought, I'll give this tool a try. I bought it a couple years ago, never did use it, but I thought it would be handy for things like this. And I'm, I'm impressed. It, you, the way this you have to set, there's a right and left, and of course then the question is, is do I turn this to the left, or do I turn the handle to the left? It's the handle goes to the left, you push it down, and you can turn it to the right or to the left. Left is counterclockwise to loosen it, and obviously to tighten it the other way. But it worked. I hit it a couple times and loosened it up and it was about to strip and now I'm able to get it out. So really, really handy tool. So I thought I'd show you that while we're talking about it here in this machine. Hopefully we'll get the new 
stator I'm gonna try and troubleshoot this I believe this is the lighting coil it looks like or the charge coil and this is the charge for the battery and this is the uh, CDI coil or the spark coil which is showing a high resistance up at the other end of the wiring system like 24 mega ohms which I don't think is correct but it did have intermittent spark so it kind of works I don't expect to really see anything here but we'll uh, we'll get that changed out but anyway back on to the one we're focused on here is our sea dew let's see if we have some spark after I welded the keyway or the flywheel onto the crankshaft and the nut for the flywheel onto the crankshaft and the nut to the flywheel we want to make sure we still have spark yet if we don't we just royally messed our stuff up for fixing that because we're gonna to have to pull the engine to repair that now that it's welded but hopefully it'll have spark for a while and we won't have to go in there and the day we do we'll just cross that bridge when we get there in the meantime let's go ahead and see if we have spark and then we can move on to the next sec section which is trying this thing out so Simon's got the battery all hooked up he's enjoying his seat over there on the on the diesel fast track and let's go ahead and crank this over and see if we got some spark and nice pretty blue spark so we can check that off the list now let's go ahead and get our spark plugs put in get some fuel to this thing I might have to run and get some I drained it out a little while ago we'll get that buttoned up and see if see if there's any hope of this thing running again and maybe we'll get a few more hours of use out of it before something else decides to leave leave working condition and we'll probably need to go on to reserve Let's see if we can suck some up I feel some in there that's a good sign That should be enough to at least see if we're going to be able to start here or not. I noticed that these things take a little while to get gas even with the primer on here. Oh, we might have to crank it a little bit before we... see any sort of life. and this one had a good flywheel the key is nice and square no signs of, of spinning same with the shaft it's nice and clean keyway the woodruff keys in there like it should be and again it was really difficult to get this one off compared to that one i had to use an impact with a puller and of course it came off and landed in the dirt and now i gotta clean everything up before i put it back together but okay we'll go ahead and give this a try and see we made any progress once I tighten up the spark plugs and put the boots on once I get my crescent wrench If we get a bunch of backfiring and banging, that means we're back to where we were. With little hope of getting that fixed without an engine pull. Okay, got your fingers crossed? See what happens, make sure we didn't forget anything here. Alright, the switch broke on me and it's actually, this is a normally, it's the wrong polarity, or I should say position. It's either normally closed or normally open and I needed the opposite. Therefore I don't have a, have to put that in so you might wonder how I'm getting spark with that, but that's why. And I didn't get a chance to put the other one back in the way it was. Okay, let's give her a try.
Okay, she'll see some water again, and hopefully it'll last a little longer. Hope you guys learned something, and got any comments, throw them below, and any other hints on what to do when you run into these situations, always open to good ideas, and hope I can share some more. So we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks again. Bye.